All right, well, good morning. I am uh, Mark McCarg, president of Nebraska Farm Bureau. Uh, we are so glad that you are out here at Husker Harvest Days. Uh, I've been coming to Husker Harvest Days for since I was a child. That's been a while, my gray hair. I have grandkids to attest that I, uh, I'm that old. But uh, thank you for being here. Uh, this is an annual event for Nebraska Farm Bureau, doing a media event on some particular subject uh, that there might be. And uh, today, <clears throat> We're going to be talking about cyber attack threats in Nebraska agriculture at our news conference today. And we have some great guests. Uh, we got Gene Cowell from the FBI, Doug Peterson, our attorney general here in Nebraska. And I'm really looking forward to the conversation. And quite honestly, uh, most of us don't wake up in the morning and think about cybersecurity threats. And I think that's a good thing because in agriculture, most of the time what we wake up thinking about is, well, did it rain last night? Uh, that answer would be no for, for this year. Uh, how, how's our crops doing? How's the livestock doing? How can we more, be more efficient in what we do? That's, that's typically what we think about. That's what makes us great at production agriculture. But with all of our technology that we have in the world, and you don't have to walk very far around these grounds to see something that's hooked to something that's collecting data. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's a machine that's being pulled by a tractor, that tractor is hooked to something that's collecting data, or whether it's our combine, or whether it's our planter, <coughs> that quite honestly on our farm, we can go to the foot or to the exact seed and see in the ground if it's there based on what it says on our iPad. Uh, we know the moisture, we know the production instantly, we know some of our fertility issues by pulling shanks through the ground. All this data we're collecting, we're storing, let alone our market data, all of our history on our farms, that's all being collected. Well, the truth of the matter is there are people out there that wouldn't mind seeing that data. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit uh, this morning. So again, uh, as we pull it together, I think you'll probably hear that uh, not only not only is agriculture and the production of food, it gets into food security and really ultimately national security in these conversations. I appreciate everyone uh, hanging around a bit as well to make sure we have the full team here. So thanks for uh, uh, hanging out for a few minutes before we get started. Well, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Gene. As I said, he's the special agent in charge uh, at the FBI. He came to us uh, a number of months ago and we had a good conversation in a Farm Bureau office just talking about the particular threats, how that we needed to partner together with them. And so, uh, Gene, I would invite you to talk a little bit about uh, why you're here this morning and the things that you're seeing in the, in the FBI department. So, Gene, thank welcome. You. Mark, thank you. Everyone, good morning. I think it is still morning. Good to see all of you here today. I'm excited to be here. I want to say that wherever Nebraska you may live, from, from Scotts Bluff to Omaha, the point in between, wherever you hail from, the cyber risk to our farms, our ranches, our food processing facilities is growing every day. You know, food and how we grow our food and how we process our food is a key part of our country's critical infrastructure. And you know that better than anyone. And with harvest season approaching, there's three cyber threats I'm gonna talk about specifically that we're most concerned about in the FBI. First, number one is the halting of your operations on your farms and ranches and food processing facilities due to ransomware attacks. What is a ransomware attack? This is when a criminal element or a nation state inserts malware on your systems, anything connected to a network, encrypts all of your data, keeps you from moving forward with your operations, and won't give your data back unless you pay an exorbitant ransom. The number two threat we're worried about is, as Mark talked about, is a theft of our data. You know, we live our lives more and more connected uh, to the digital highway, and the theft of our data, our technology, and our innovation by foreign adversaries presents a particular concern for us, notably from the People's Republic of China. And three, I want to say we're focused on always the risk posed by adversarial nation states, whether it's China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, implanting malware on any of our industrial control systems, uh, halting our food production. 
So I want to say that the cyber threats we're seeing today are more pervasive. They target a wider variety of victims. They carry the potential for greater damage than we've ever seen before. And this impacts every one of us here in Nebraska, who lives here, who works here. And I want to say that there's a whole lot of companies in Nebraska that can be affected by cyber attacks. Over the past year, we've seen a surge in ransomware attacks in the agriculture industry. During last year, year's fall harvest, we saw six different attacks on grain cooperatives, three in our region. Some of the ransomware attacks hit production, others hit administrative functions. Another two grain co-ops were hit earlier this year. And when that happened, we of course were very concerned that these attacks would disrupt fertilizer supply, disrupt seed supply, and impact this fall's harvest. Fortunately, the attacks were stopped. They were mitigated before there's any lasting damage. Um, but we did investigate. The FBI investigated. And although we did not identify one single threat actor, one single criminal, or one single point of intrusion common to all those companies, we do believe that those co-ops were targeted and that those attacks were purposely launched to coincide with the planting and harvesting season. So how did those criminals get in? They got in through unpatched networks. They got in through shared network resources. They got through compromised managed service providers. We also saw in January 2021, a ransomware attack against a U.S. farm resulted in the loss of approximately $9 million due to the shutdown of farming operations. And in that case, the threat actor, the criminal, was able to gain administrator level access through compromised credentials by obtaining password access. So as we approach this fall season, there's, we expect these kinds of cyber attacks to continue. You know, and like most critical infrastructure that we work to protect in the FBI, agriculture, as Marcus said, has grown increasingly reliant, as you know, on technology, like the kind displayed all around us here, uh, especially the use of wireless and precision agriculture technology. And this has made us in America even better at growing our crops or raising our livestock. We're the envy of the world, but it also makes us more vulnerable to cyber threats. And unfortunately, cyber criminals know this. Um, they're very savvy. And what cyber criminals look for is targets that have the lowest perceived protection the lowest perceived security, but have the highest potential payout. And in many ways, agriculture hits the mark for them. It can yield the bad guys a big payday, and we all know too well that farmers and ranchers do not often have the kind of sophisticated cybersecurity infrastructure that a large multinational corporation might have. What I can tell you is this. From our offices in Nebraska, whether in Omaha or Lincoln or Grand Island or North Platte, we're working hard to detect deter and disrupt any kind of malicious cyber activity. And it's not just a matter of money. I mean, the economic implications are important, but for us, cybersecurity is an issue of national security. You know, we know that our adversaries are exploiting our data and our information. We know that the People's Republic of China has highlighted publicly their intention to make its own agriculture sector more competitive. And our agriculture industry is a prime target of the Chinese government. We know China has stolen trillions of dollars across many different areas in sophisticated U.S. technology. And we know the People's Republic of China wants to acquire U.S. agriculture technology and overtake U.S. agriculture companies. And you may remember, some of you may know, a few years ago, uh, our office here, the FBI office here in Omaha, we identified and indicted an executive of a company working on behalf of the People's Republic of China attempting to steal proprietary corn seed from a rural, corn, rural field in Iowa. So our FBI special agents, our computer scientists, our analysts are ready to help. We remain vigilant to protect all of you from these types of attacks. So I, this is my ask. If you become the victim of a cyber attack and you call us, we will come help. We can be on almost any doorstep in this state within a pretty quick amount of time, and we will do whatever we can to both help mitigate the attack, get you back into business, identify where the attack came from, and impose significant risks and consequences on that cyber adversary. So we can't do this alone. You know, we depend on the partnerships with the private sector, probably more than any other violation we work in the FBI. And although the cyber threat is it's relatively new, the way we're approaching it is not. And in fact, a lot of the lessons we learned from combating terrorism after 9-11, we apply to the cyber threat. Um, our goal is prevention and, and disruption, hitting attackers before their attacks and during the attacks, getting the information, the people who need it, people like you, so you can prevent attacks on your system. So how can we help you? So if your farm or your ranch or your co-op or your business experiences a breach, experiences a ransomware attack, is a victim of any kind of cyber crime, while maybe brand new to you, there's a good chance that we have seen it in the FBI 
or our global partners have seen it. When we can quickly engage with you, we can help blunt that attack. We can follow money that has been stolen. In many ways, times we can freeze and seize that money and bring it back. We sometimes can block money transfers. We can also take away the tools that cyber criminals are using to encrypt your data. We can secure your data which has been stolen and sometimes prevent the attackers from causing future harm. So our ask is this. For all businesses in Nebraska, especially in the agriculture industry, which is so critical, is to have a cyber incident response plan and include us, include the FBI as part of that plan before you're hit. And in the event you do suffer an intrusion, call us. Call us as quickly as you can at 402-493-8688 or just go to www.fbi.gov slash cyber. So a couple of things you can do, and I'll leave, I'll leave you with these thoughts. There are some things you can do to prevent cyber attacks in the first place. One, don't be an easy target. Install updates, install patches to your operating systems and your software and firmware as quickly as you can. We all get those alerts on our phone, our computer, wanting to install new patches. And often what do we do? We say, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow. But the reason those patches are there are often specifically to prevent hackers getting into a vulnerability that the computer company or the phone company has identified. So update your systems as soon as you can. Update your antivirus and anti-malware software. When possible, use multi-factor authentication to log into anything, not just a password, but a password and a fact, a password and a fingerprint, a password and an eye scan, something else than just a password, and change your passwords. Be careful, this is for everyone, your, your children, your family, your spouse, be careful of any link you click on. If you get an email, from anyone you don't know or haven't been in contact with before asking you to click on a link, be very careful before you click on that link. There's a, it's a very easy way for our cyber adversaries, both criminals and nation states, to implant malware on your system. Maintain, gap, maintain air-gapped backups of all your data. If you have important business critical data, don't just keep it on the server side, keep it somewhere else on a hard drive so you can quickly get back up to speed. And most importantly, I would say, as I said to begin with, have a cyber incident response plan. Plan on what you would do if your farm, your ranch, your company is hit. And be prepared to call us as quickly as you can before it happens, of course, and after it happens. And we'll be out there to help you. So good to see all of you. And I think by working together, we can prevent, we can detect, we can deter malicious cyber activity and improve our collective ability to protect agriculture here in Nebraska. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Well, thank you, Gene. You're all feeling good, right? It's like, okay, thumbs up, yeah. I, great information, uh, appreciate Gene sharing that. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Doug Peterson. Many of you probably know him. He's been our Attorney General for seven and a half years. And uh, I tell you what, I got to know Doug uh, early on when he was running, and uh, just really an absolute stand-up guy. He understands agriculture, he understands the threats, uh, but is involved in so many things, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what what is next on his plate, but I'm certainly he's going to fill some holes in other places. But uh, Doug, please come and uh, share us a little bit what's going on and relative to this topic. Thanks, Mark. Can you tell Gene and I got the memo how to dress like government guys at an ag conference? <laughs> it's either that or a banker. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I appreciate, I really appreciate Farm Bureau being on top of this. Uh, Farm Bureau was the one who reached out to our office, and then uh, the FBI and how they've been engaged. If the, there's kind of some simple math here. If the FBI is concerned and they're reaching out to ag, ag really needs to listen. Because FBI is a tremendous resource, but they're not going to put those resources in unless they believe there's a real threat. And so the fact that Gene's even here and working so closely with the ag community to try to get this word out is a good indication that this threat is serious. Let me tell you a little bit what the uh, Nebraska Department of Justice is doing in this area. Under Nebraska law, if there is any, um, any hack into your business records and you have any consumers on your records and someone hacks into your records, you have a duty and obligation to contact the Nebraska Attorney General's office because then we will come and what we will evaluate for your business is what type of safeguards did you put in. Now the government is in, can stand really on no higher ground than you as business people because the government has had hacks of their uh, records, uh, some significant hacks. But the question is, have you as a business properly tried to protect those business records by putting in 
what are considered the appropriate standards. If you ignore this issue about protecting your data and you allow an, an easy hack to come into your business system and grab your customer's business records, there's sometimes their, uh, their charge cards, their social security, other important uh, records, then you are subject potentially to a fine. And I, I've not in the seven and a half years ever invoked a fine on a business that's been hacked because most of the time when we evaluate a business that has been hacked, it's either on a national level or at a local level, they have been trying to do what they can because the hackers are so sophisticated. Gene's talked about a lot of safeguards that you can do. I'm not going to repeat those again, but you can as a business or as an individual, if you have concerns about whether you're not your uh, computer system and your records and all your information are safe, go to our webpage at protectthegoodlife.com.org. Doggone it. My communications person is normally right here saying .com.org. Just go to the Nebraska Attorney General's office. We do have on our consumer protection area uh, some good information about safeguards. But my main message to you is we're involved in uh, some national lawsuits against Google. Uh, we're doing an investigation on Instagram and TikTok on what they do with data. And your data to them is gold because they can monetize your data in so many different ways. And the problem is, right now, our laws are not very well structured for you to be able to control your data. Typically, you have something that you want to buy. You're fairly um, uh, desperate in having to buy it or uh, want to go onto the site. And basically, they'll have some waiver language to allow them to go in to take your records. And it's an easy click. And the question is, how much can we do to protect your privacy? And that's a big issue. It's being discussed in Congress. It's being discussed in several uh, states. California, Colorado are two states that have put together some privacy data laws. But the thing we need to start understanding is, number one, people want your data. And number two, you have to do everything you can to protect your data. Because if you don't, not only can you be hacked, can you put yourself in financial exposure, but you also can put this, this country, uh, particularly in the ag area, at risk. And that's one of our big concerns is if China is uh, doing everything they can to get a hold of your data, it obviously means something. And so we have to fight back both individually and from a government standpoint to do what we can to protect that. So I appreciate Farm Bureau trying to get in front of this as fast as they can. And I really appreciate the FBI saying they're there to help as much as they can. And that's the message from the Nebraska Department of Justice. We want to do this collectively as a team to be as smart as we can to thwart any of these attempts to get our data. Thank you, Doug. You bet. Appreciate it. Well, so uh, great information. Uh, I think we have time for possibly a few questions. So questions on... Uh, uh, what their roles are, anything that you may have heard today. Maybe repeat the question. So the, the question was, what are we seeing in terms of cyber attacks in the agriculture industry versus all other sectors? It's a great question. You know, we don't, we have seen an exponential increase in cyber attacks, particularly ransomware and business email compromise schemes, like across the country, both in our state here in Nebraska and everywhere. And it, and it spans every enterprise. So I can't really say that it's more pronounced in the agriculture industry. What I can say is that we've identified the agriculture industry as one of sort of our 16 critical infrastructure sectors that we're committed to protecting. And so we're gonna take any attack on agriculture, on our food, how we grow our food, how we raise our livestock, how we process it um, very seriously. And we have seen the threat increasing. As I said, starting last year, we saw attacks on grain cooperatives, including in our area. So we do see it increasing. Comparing it to other industries that sort of apples and oranges. What we see in the agriculture industry is the challenge is there's many, many more participants in the supply chain. It's not just a linear progression of a few big companies and where they get their parts from, but there's thousands and thousands of suppliers uh, that are spread out and decentralized. So that's where we see the pronounced risk. I would say our reports or notices are primarily national businesses a few local, but no emphasis on ag quite yet. I think the FBI's experience has been more related to ag. 
Other questions? Yeah, so the question was, uh, in our automated uh, world, in, in driverless vehicles and our tractors, is there more risk uh, in those systems and, and being shut down than uh, other systems within the ag sector? That is a major risk. It's not, we don't see it as prevalent as ransomware attacks, but in some ways it's much more significant. And so it's a, a, a huge vulnerability. First, in our older industrial control systems, a lot of those are based on code that was written sometimes in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, open source code that anyone can access. And it was built in a time when cybersecurity wasn't on any of our minds. So it presents a lot of vulnerability, both in agriculture, in utilities, in our water supply. Um, we also, of course, worry about adversaries, whether it's Russia or China or North Korea or Iran. Um, getting a presence in those systems, and in the event of a conflict, using that presence to shut down those systems. Um, you also have to remember, in terms of supply chain, like everything you buy in terms of technology, like where did that come from? And if it comes from a company, a Chinese company, if it was made in China, uh, you have to assume there's a high risk that the Chinese government might have access or pipeline to that data. Um, and that's an additional vulnerability in that area. So it is. Luckily, we don't see that all the time, but in some ways that's the most significant uh, danger in terms of the cyber risk to national security is possible intrusions on critical infrastructure in the way that you describe. Go ahead. So the question is about uh, the, the farm that Gene mentioned that uh, had a $9 million a cost to a cyber attack. So not to give, go into too many details, we can perhaps give you some afterwards, but it hit the business operations side. I don't know offhand right now the point of access or the point of compromise. Um, we see some attacks, as we've seen nationally, that hit, uh, they'll hit the business, they'll hit like the administrative side. We saw that, but yet by hitting the administrative side, it prevents the business from operating, from selling fuel or selling their product. This actually hit the business operations side, uh, but I can try to get you more information on the point of compromise and the point of entry for that malware. Any other questions? Well, if not, thank you for being here. Uh, these, are, these are the type of things that a Nebraska Farm Bureau gets involved in. Myself as a president of Nebraska Farm Bureau, it's just really important that as we're scanning the environment, we're involved in a lot of conversation, a lot of high level conversations. And this was one of those conversations that people started saying, you know what, we need to start, it. We need to start talking about this. It's not something members necessarily came to us and said, I am really concerned about cyber attacks. And so that's part of our role is not only art, the issues on the ground, production, uh, regulatory issues, but issues out there that we don't know much about and we need to gather information and kind of raise the conversation. So again, thank you for being here. Gene and Doug, appreciate your time. And uh, hope everybody has a great day this afternoon.